I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape, Five on Friday, Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 9th of April, 2021. In the news this week, Montgomery County, Maryland is doubling their 30% vape excise tax to an absurd 60%. In Indiana, well, their senators refused to add any tax on combustible tobacco but they had no problem adding a 10% final price tax on tobacco harm reduction products. Meanwhile, the state legislatures of South Carolina and Montana are battling out whether to allow local and county governments from implementing stricter laws than what the state has. And this is all being done to stop kids from illegally picking up a product that is 95% safer than readily available combustible tobacco. Maybe I need to remind these politicians that adolescents make up 16% of the population, and only half of them are old enough to legally, illegally sneak access and try harm reduction products. Meanwhile, smoking kills half of its users. And according to the CDC, 21% of Indiana adults smoke combustible tobacco every single day politicians need to get their head out of their ass and focus on providing adults easier and cheaper access to safer nicotine products. In fact, since this news report started, there's already been a smoking-related death. Oops. Better make that two deaths in the United States from smoking since this news report started. And globally... If you look at the combustible tobacco death rates globally, since this news report started, 19 smokers have just died because they didn't take up vaping to get away from smoking. Let's move on. In New Zealand, retailers warn that upcoming vape regulations will see many vapors return to smoking. And in China... Despite there being a slew of existing and potential vape regulations, well, it hasn't stopped manufacturing companies like S'more International from heavily investing to increase their production capacity. Their two-phase project is going to increase production from the existing 2.3 billion annual units to a whopping capacity of 5.3 billion units every single year. Damn, that's a lot of vapes. Next, I've got a conversation article titled, Vape Sellers Are Using Popular Music Videos to Promote Electronic Cigarettes to Young People. And it's working. But is it really? I mean, seriously. And in the light of the Vaping Awareness Month, well, you know, Vapril 2021, I want to draw your attention to a debate on the challenges and opportunities facing vapor. Lastly, for our science segment, I have two research reports for you. The first is an Australian study from the University of Queensland, and it indicates, like the previous UK studies did, that electronic cigarettes are more effective to stop smoking than traditional NRT products. Next is a study commissioned by the Malaysian Vape Industry Advocacy Organization. And it shows that 88% of vapors were able to completely quit smoking because they found a flavorful vape. Ain't nothing to it, but to get into it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's published in Bethesda Magazine. Montgomery County's excise tax on electronic cigarettes could double under the proposed increase. Council President Tom Hucker spearheaded a resolution introduced at the council meeting on Tuesday to double the current 30% tax rate on wholesale prices of electronic cigarette products to 60%. 60% tax. That is such an unrealistic figure. Who the hell in their right mind is going to pay 60% tax in Montgomery County when you could just drive down the road to any other neighboring counties and not have to pay this ridiculous tax? 
You can go right down to Washington, D.C. or Virginia. You can even leave the state and go to Virginia and not have to pay this ridiculous tax. But this guy thinks that, oh, well, we need to double the tax on electronic cigarettes. What a ridiculous idea. Well, if you live in Montgomery County or if you live in the area, they have a public hearing scheduled on the resolution. It's on April 27th at 1.30 in the afternoon. Council approved the 30% tax rate back in 2015. And now here they are trying to double it to 60%. What a ridiculous idea. Well, Indiana's no better. In fact, I think Indiana's even worse. Why? Well, because Indiana decided, well, we're not going to increase the taxes on cigarettes. Not right now. We'll save that for when we really need the money. But we're going to imp impose a 10% tax on electronic cigarettes and on vaping products, yeah. They were originally going to propose a $2 per pack tax increase. And if they did a $2 per pack tax increase and only put a 10% tax on vapor products, I could understand the logic behind that. Make it more expensive for the deadly combustible tobacco and make it cheaper for the safer alternative. But that's not what they did. They decided that they were going to put a 10% tax on electronic cigarettes, on tobacco harm reduction, but they're not going to raise the taxes on cigarettes. So what do they think is going to happen? Who funded this idea for these people? What a joke. Let's move on. Let's move on to South Carolina. South Carolina, just like Montana, is in the process right now of the state imposing limitations on what local and county governments can get away with. And in South Carolina, they just passed House Bill 3681, okay? And 3681 basically is codifying what is allowed to be imposed on nicotine products. All right? Let's move on. Let's move on to Montana. Well, as you might know, because I've covered it before in the news, Missoula, Montana banned all electronic cigarettes, not only in their town, but extending five miles outside of their town. Well, one of their lawmakers, who happens to be a vape shop owner, well, he decided that he was going to take this on right at the source. Got it off, elected into office, Jason Ellsworth, and uh, they tried killing his bill. His bill would legalize nicotine products, okay? And he had a statute that he was proposing that would have, well, let's just go right to the horse and mouth. Let's go right to the bill, okay? Here's the actual text of the bill. Alternative nicotine products and vapor products, local ordinance or resolution prohibition, straight up preventing local governments from adopting or enforcing any ordinance or resolution that prohibits the sale of alternative nicotine products or vapor products. And it was marching along pretty good. And then all of a sudden something happened. I don't know who got bought off or what happened, but all of a sudden it got rejected after it was already approved. Because, you know, they have to read things three times and approve things three times before they can proceed. Yeah, well. That bill was killed. And Senator Ellsworth 
the Hamilton Republican brought it back and reproposed it. So this time it got passed. Makes you kind of wonder, why would why would it get passed this time if it got refused earlier? Well, let's go down and let's actually look at this. See, what did they just change in it? Local regulations. A local government may, by ordinance, adopt regulations on the subjects of 1611-301 through 1611-308 including alternative nicotine or vapor products as provided in section one that are more stringent than 1611, 301, and 308. What? That's contrary to what the opening section is. So what is that? What is that? What are they talking about? What are they allowed to make stricter than the state? Because this bill primary purpose of this bill is to legalize it and prevent local governments from banning it. Right? Oh. Youth Access to Tobacco Products Control Act. Yeah, they already passed that one. Right. So distribution of products, civil penalties, license suspensions, tobacco education fees fees taxes there we go now this makes sense now i understand why it was voted down and now it's proceeding again well because somebody had an objection and wanted to get more tax money they wanted higher fines in their area than the state has well as a conciliatory measure they decided okay if you'll vote yes on this, I'll let you have stricter punishment for when youth have access to it or when stores break the law and sell it to youth. But now that it's got this little addition onto it, it was voted on again and it passed. Oh, legalize it, but make it even more expensive. That's exactly what they're doing. Everywhere they're doing this, they're legalizing it but making it so expensive that there is no difference between when you, if you were to totally ban it and if you did this to it. Well, pretty damn close. Moving on. Because I obviously need to remind these politicians that the purpose of having an alternative nicotine product, otherwise known as a vape device, and hence the vape shops that sell these devices is to get people to give up deadly combustible tobacco. In Montana, 18% of the population smokes combustible tobacco every single day. Mm -hmm. And in South Carolina, 17.4%. Yeah. How about Indiana? We were talking about Indiana earlier. 21.1% of the people smoke every single day. And take a look at the poorest state in the whole country. West Virginia, 25.2%. In Kentucky, it's 23.4%. In Arkansas, it's 22.7%. Uh-huh. That's the smoking rate. Half of all cigarette smokers die from their deadly habit. Mm -hmm. Tobacco-related mortality. According to the CDC, here's the list. 480,000 deaths annually, including deaths from secondhand smoke. Uh -huh. 278,544 men and 201,773 women every single year. Life expectancy for smokers is at least 10 years shorter than non-smokers. Quitting smoking before the age of 40 reduces the risk of dying from smoking-related diseases. This is about 90%. This is 95% safer than smoking. So you retain 5% of the risk. But if you can't give up the habit... 
because it's part of your coping skills that you've developed over your lifetime? 95% safer is a hell of a lot better than 100% death rate. I know, I know, it's not 100% death rate. It only kills half of its users. But you get my point. Lung cancer, other cancers, coronary heart disease, cerebral vascular disease, other vascular disease, diabetes, respiratory diseases. Mm -hmm. These are all caused by smoking combustible tobacco. There isn't anything like this with vaping. Looking at the, the global data for smoking, the health burden of smoking is now shifting from high income to low and middle income countries. Mm -hmm. It's because the low and middle income people use it as a coping mechanism for not having what they need sometimes. That's why it's the number two on the list of the number of deaths by risk factor. 7.1 million people every single year. This was in 2017, 7.1 million people died from smoking across the world. And let's take a look at, you can look at individual countries. Let's scroll down to the United States. The United States smoking kills 422,011 people in 2017. Half a million people every single year die from smoking. Why are all these places imposing taxes restrictions on the safer alternative product? How can these people sleep at night knowing what they're doing? Forcing these people to continue smoking. Half of the people try to quit every single year or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to beat a dead horse anymore. Let's move on. Let's move on to New Zealand where I talked about it a couple of weeks ago in the news. They released the... Um, financial statement on how much they collected in taxes and the smoking taxes last year were half of what they were the year before. Uh-huh. Government's not happy about that. That's called a revenue shortfall. So now they're going to be imposing new regulations in New Zealand where they already know that this is an effective way to quit smoking. See, the thing works. But they need their money. So here we have the article. Retailers warn vape regulations will see a return to smoking. The government is cracking down on who can sell vape products in the hopes of stopping young people from picking up a nicotine habit. But retailers warn this will have a bigger impact on current smokers trying to quit. Proposed regulations would limit general retailers to selling tobacco, menthol, or mint-flavored products. Anyone wanting vape flavor unrelated to cigarettes would need to go to a specialty vape store. Dairy owners from Fielding and Palmerston North agreed that removing vape juices from their shelves would not hurt their bottom line, as none believed vaping was as common a habit as cigarette smoking. Interesting how they want to remove the vaping products, but they still leave the cigarettes on the shelves. You can still buy cigarettes in every street corner, every shop. We just don't want you to have flavored vape juices. Uh-huh. And this is in New Zealand. 
Don't ever think that the battle is over just because things look good in, in your location of the world. Even the UK. Yeah, I came across an article this week while doing the research that um, apparently because of uh, whatever, there's a spice problem in the UK. Mm-hmm. Spice has nothing to do with nicotine. It has to do completely with marijuana. But they're still calling it spice vape. What? Spice vape. Nine collapsed in Greater Manchester, UK. Uh-huh. Nine young people have collapsed after unwittingly, unwittingly using a vaping liquid containing the synthetic drug spice. THC vape pens, THC oil, has nothing to do with tobacco harm reduction. But it's giving tobacco harm reduction a bad name. Let's move on. Let's move on to China. We talked about a couple of weeks ago about how um, the Chinese and the China Chinese government is um, going to be imposing new regulations on the electronic cigarette industry because they have a little monopoly on the tobacco industry in their country and how relics took a major hit on their stock. Yeah. Kate Wang saw her net worth lose $3 billion in one day because of the potential regulations. And there's regulations being imposed on electronic nicotine products all around the globe. So you would think that, you know, they're going to be a little conservative in their tactics, right? Nope. See, regulation is inevitable when an industry matures to the size that vaping has become. And some more international holdings, they see the revenue potential in front of them. And they're going ahead and they're going to continue spending a lot on R&D to make their products better. Yep. The S'more Group will maintain a relatively high R&D investment in the future and will also deploy medical and healthcare products. Diversification. That's the next thing that happens when companies get big. Hoping to become a new growth point. Just in case things get really bad with the regulations. But they welcome the regulations in China from the Chinese government. Mm-hmm. They're also moving forward with their expansion. You see, they have a two-phase expansion going on right now. S'more International has a production capacity of 2.32 billion units. Not sure what they're classifying as a unit. I don't know if that includes like the coils that go inside the tanks or whether that's complete kits or just a number that represents all of their production capacity as a general output. Well, they're moving forward with their expansion and their upgrade. A lot of automation, just like all the other industries around the globe. So the old pictures that you see, lines upon lines of people sitting at a table, assembling all these things. Yeah, robotics are going to replace a bunch of that. It is great for a company because they can guarantee that every single coil is going to be exactly the same. Everything, everything can be properly tested. And you can literally test every single coil before it goes out the door. Well, they're moving forward with their expansion. And they're saying that the annual production capacity will increase no less than 500 million units this year. And by next year, they will have increased no less than 1.8, 1 1.08 billion over what they're doing now. 
2.37 billion dollars 2.37 billion units is what they're doing now and after phase two is completed they expect to have an annual production capacity of 5.3 billion units every single year that's a hell of a lot of vapes and that's just one company what are the other companies doing right now I don't know. Moving on. I have a conversation piece here. It says the vape sellers, and this is like popping up all over the place. I found it on Yahoo. I found it in a bunch of different places, but the conversation is where it got started. Academic rigor, journalistic flair. Vape sellers are using popular music videos to promote electronic cigarettes to young people. And the study says that it's working. Is it really? Is it really working? Is that the reason why kids are picking up vapes? Because of music videos? Well, according to this study that they did, kids watch the videos reportedly, and they recognize the videos, and they recognize the fact that there were vaping products in some of these videos. So looking, uh, scrolling down the list, what exactly are they talking about here? Okay. They did a sample of 1,280 young adults, ages 18 to 24, who lived in California, and asked them to complete surveys that assess their exposure to specific music videos and electronic cigarette use, among other variables. Yeah. I really wish that you would have published the actual data or link to it, but you're not going to do that. They say minors are at greatest risk, younger than 21, because they've used electronic cigarettes because of watching these videos. Really? Well, I'm just going to take you to the conversation and I, I feel the same as this guy. Using product placement to target your kids, vape sellers, and the placement in a music video Apparently, everyone's vaping in those things. Well, not if you actually read the article, because it said it was like one video out of, oh, where the heck is it? Here we go. Participants recalled an average of four music videos among the 20 videos that were listed before them. Mm -hmm. And naturally, they went from the Billboard Top 100 list of music videos. And they asked the kids, you know, how many of these did you recognize? And how many of these did you watch? Four out of 20 is what they watched. Yeah. But how many of these kids picked it up because they saw it in a music video? That's nowhere to be found in any of this. So I fall back on this talking point. Apparently everyone's vaping in those things. If you have kids, are you concerned about this? Does having a hip hop star vaping in a video really lead to kids vaping? Maybe. But I remember people smoking in movies and on TV when I was a kid. And it didn't make me want to smoke for what it's worth. That wasn't the reason I started smoking. Had nothing to do with music videos. Because there were plenty of people smoking music videos when I was growing up. The days of MTV, when it first got started. But what do I know? Moving on. We are moving on. This is April. This is also known as Vapril for Vaping Awareness Month. And I want to draw your attention to this article. It's published in Tobacco Reported. And we're also going to go to the website before we get done for Vapril 2021. It's Vaping Awareness Month. And I want you guys to be able to sit, if you have the time, to go watch this video because this video is all the tobacco harm reduction experts 
in the industry. It, we, we really do. And these are all the people that are out there fighting for the industry. You'll recognize these names. Clive Bates, Clarence Mitchell from UK Via. But this video, they talk about what is going on in the industry, what is going on around the world, what is going on with, with regulations, and what kind of legal hurdles do companies have to deal with nowadays. It's a very good, it's a very good video. But there's a link in the description below if you want to check it out. Moving on. Vaping and electronic cigarettes might actually help smokers quit. Who would have known? Well, there's some new research that was done in Australia, and the new study suggests that vapes and electronic cigarettes could be more effective in helping smokers quit than almost anything else. That sounds just like the study that came out of the UK that said the exact same thing. Wow, it's amazing when you do real science that you can replicate it in other parts of the world and get the exact same results. Wow, who would have known that? I mean, besides us vapors, you know, because that's what we did. We, we picked this up to give up our deadly combustible tobacco habit. However, this article takes it one step further and they say that these findings are in stark contrast with Australia's inconsistent and restrictive electronic cigarette laws, which have led to a gray market for vape liquids and products. The vape market is set to be worth $67.31 billion by 2027, driven largely by demand from Gen Z and millennials. Yep. And as those of us in the previous generations know, Vaping is the key to quitting smoking. Since regulation passed in 2017, in almost all Australian states, personal vaporizers, as they're calling them, electronic cigarettes or vape pens have been regulated as smoking products, including restrictions around sales, display, marketing, and use in non-smoking areas. One of the things that they talk about in that video for Vapril is the fact that us vapors, we have to be sent to the same place where cigarette smokers are if we want to use our vaping product. It's the way it is in the United States. That's considered a classification of a smoking zone. And unfortunately, right now, these are classified as tobacco products. So even if you wanted to fight it, I'm not sure you'd be able to get very far. Well, Australia has been fighting this for a long time. And this study done in uh, Queensland found that electronic cigarettes are 50% more effective than nicotine replacement therapy and more than 100% more effective than a placebo. Uh-huh. Electronic cigarettes containing nicotine may be more effective than nicotine replacement products, he said, because they deliver a small amount of nicotine to alleviate withdrawal symptoms and provide a similar behavior and sensory experience as smoking tobacco products. Wow. Common sense. Why can't people understand common sense? Australian electronic cigarette restrictions are to be reconsidered this year. Dr. Chen said current recommendations by the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners rate electronic cigarettes as a second line treatment to support quitting smoking, but suggested based on the findings that this recommendation could be reevaluated. Wow, wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that be amazing in Australia? If they went and dropped this prescription requirement that they have now, only time will tell what actually ends up happening. Let's move on to our second science summary, our second science study. We have a survey that was commissioned by the Malaysian Vape Industry Advocacy Organization 
and it just revealed that 88% of Malaysian vapors who used to smoke cigarettes successfully quit because of vapes with the aid of a vape. The same poll also found that 79% who currently vape and smoke traditional cigarettes at the same time have reduced smoking since taking up vaping, while 66% of current smokers will start vaping or continue to vape to quit smoking completely. When you have an enjoyable experience that is much more enjoyable than smoking, why would you want to continue to smoke? Forget about the fact that this is safer than lighting tobacco on fire and breathing that in. Why would you want to if this tastes so good and it alleviates your cravings? That's why it's the most successful product. It's not surprising. Well, you can take a look at the article yourself if you're interested in finding out more about it. It says that 56% uh, of Malaysians overall are saying that the number of people vaping has increased in the past few years. And the top reason contributing to this is because vaping is perceived as less harmful than cigarette smoking. Imagine if that perception was fostered all around the world. Imagine how quickly the numbers of people smoking would decline. It's unbelievable what potential is there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Vapril 2021. Vapril, for those of you that aren't familiar with this, comes from UKVIA, the United Kingdom Vaping Industry Association puts this on. This is their fourth year of Vapril, Vaping Awareness Month. And they set up this website to support smokers in making the right decision about vaping to support their transition off of deadly combustible tobacco. And uh, we've got a video here. This is the launch webinar. And it may be the exact same video that I showed you in the other link. However, both of these links will be in the description below and you can take up and follow the links yourself if you want to further, further look into the topic. But that, that, Wraps up the Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report. This is the 9th of April, 2021. I want to thank you guys for watching. Just as a little update, I am currently working on moving my studio to another room. Actually, not the original room I planned on doing, but I will be putting out a vlog of my progress on that. Hopefully this weekend. And... Uh, like I said, I really appreciate you guys watching. That wraps it up for today, the 9th of April, 2021. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend, and I'll catch you in the next one.